end of 2023 economic forecasts for small business owners are some of the worst we have seen in a long time. If your small business belongs to the majority of small businesses that are struggling to stay afloat financially or even actively losing money, then this video is a must watch as you consider your future and subsequently your life. In this video, we'll be talking about some very telling signs that it is time to close your small business. I mean, I want to be very clear that closing one small business doesn't mean you can't start another far more successful small business. It doesn't mean that you can't have a far more successful life outside of being a business owner. And it certainly is not something that reflects failure on your end. There is in far, far greater failures that you and your family could experience if you don't act at the right time and read the writing on the wall if your business is in a particularly difficult situation. And we'll be talking about all of this in today's video. So make sure you keep on watching. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Pam Matani. I'm a business lawyer and the founder here at Graphene Business Law a law firm working exclusively with business owners and entrepreneurs throughout the province of Ontario, Canada, and doing so virtually. So we can serve you anywhere in the province of Ontario, if you're a business owner or entrepreneur. If you're new to our YouTube channel, please give this video a big thumbs up and click on the subscribe button down below. It takes a lot of effort to post these educational videos and Graphene Business Law's YouTube channel posts educational videos multiple times per week that are free and solely for your benefit as small business owners and entrepreneurs. Today's video might not speak to one of the lighter topics we've covered on this channel. This channel is full. I believe we have well over a hundred videos on how to grow your business, how to better your skill set as an entrepreneur and business owner, how to acquire financing, how to scale your business up, how to take advantage of technological development, software as a service platforms, and all of these amazing opportunities and all these amazing educational opportunities that you can use to your benefit are found on this channel. And make no mistake that this video presents an educational opportunity as well, despite having the more difficult topic of closing your business. And I want to acknowledge right off the bat that that conversation will be difficult for many viewers owing solely to what? Emotions. Logically, closing a business can be one of the best decisions for that business, for that business owner's life, that business owner's family, friends, relatives, support groups, whatever the case may be, and that business owner's future. Logically speaking, this would include scenarios where you're no longer in crippling amounts of debt. You're no longer, you know, working with completely shot self-esteem and a sense of failure showing up to work with your head down every day, knowing that after putting in 16 hours into your business that day, you'll walk out poorer than when you walked in. Again, on the logical front, closing your business can be one of the best things you do now, right? I'm not saying closing the door on business ownership in perpetuity. I'm saying closing that struggling business and taking it behind the barn today, allowing your self clarity to do better things tomorrow, including remaining in the small business avenue with a better business. Okay. However, emotionally closing down a small business can be one of the most difficult things that clients ever deal with. There is so much emotion pertaining to clients sense of self when it comes to their owning a small business and being a small business owner to what they thought life would turn out like. There are clients that have decades of experience in small business and they see, you know, on social media, the small business owners with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis and, you know, taking their family out on a yacht every weekend. And you think, why couldn't it be me? I work harder than anyone I know. That is a conversation for a different video. And there are videos on this channel that I'll link down below on how to give yourself the best chance at being a successful business owner. But again, in this video, we're talking about signs that it's time to close down your business, a decision that for all the reasons I've mentioned are, I understand as a lawyer is not an easy one. However, it can be the best decision you make today. 
people make it difficult by looking to a small business as their baby. If you look to your failing small business as a disease, well, the question posed of how much longer do you want to carry this disease around comes with an inherently clearer answer of, I don't want to carry a disease around. So let's talk about it. I'm going to split my answer here in two categories, and I want to be very clear about those categories. One is the logistical, financial, numerical reasons that it's time to close that small business. Another is the personal, mental health, physical health, toll on relationships, things like that. Okay. On the logistics front, on the side that you can point to that balance sheet and see it's going nowhere fast. On that front, telltale signs that it's time to close your small business or at least consider closing your small business. Having massive amounts of debt that you have no foreseeable resource or avenues through which to pay back. This, as with everything in this video, is going to come with the asterisk of depends on your scenario, okay? There are businesses out there who classify as small businesses technically for lending or grant or whatever purposes that are making millions of dollars a year. For these businesses to be $2 million in debt, for example, is not necessarily detrimental in and of itself. You've seen the Shark Tank episode where companies go there sometimes losing close to a million dollars a month and they're worth that investment because there's a bigger picture to the overall corporate profile. You might be in a scenario if you are making, the other day I went to a butter tart shop because a family member requested it and they only sold one thing, butter tarts. I don't mean to oversimplify their business, but my suspicion is not that this is a multi-million dollar operation, okay? So for that butter tart shop, something like fifty dollars to $100,000 in debt might be a massive, overwhelming amount of debt that they have no foreseeable means through which to pay back. And that might be their signal that it's time to pull the plug. Professionals that can help you decide if numbers are not your forte, when to decide to pull that plug, would include lawyers and accountants. Here at Graphene Business Law, we do have strong experience with the winding up, conclusion, restructuring, whatever the case may be, of, sm of small businesses. And the value in coming to see us before you've closed your business is that despite the fact that there's that stigma of lawyers being expensive, going to see a lawyer is always worth it because of the value proposition of how much more value you will get outside of the financials that you put in. You pay whatever the hourly rate is, but you can come out with that, with, you know, with tens of thousands, for example, in the 50 to a hundred thousand dollar scenario of money saved from us here at Graphene Business Law, knowing the law inside and out and being able to help you take advantage of clauses and financial you know, considerations that you would never have been aware of. Seeing a lawyer is seldom, is very rarely a more expensive thing to do than not. So the debt front, that's one metric. Another metric is the monthly, right? Debt is that overall picture, but the monthly of losing money. I recently came across an article, a professional article that stated that 75% of restaurant owners in Canada are either losing money every month or just breaking even. 75% of business owners in the restaurant industry are showing up to work with their head down knowing that after a full shift they will be worse off than when they showed up to work if that time span for you has been prolonged not for a month or two that's not necessarily when i would ring the alarm bells but if we're pushing toward the year measure so something in the half a year to year mark and you have tried to do things that work so in other words it's not just a matter of you not being a skilled or qualified or capable business owner it's a matter of the business itself it's a failure of the business itself that continuous losing of money can be a red flag for your business and a sign that it's time to close up shop as well 
And again, here, the answer depends, and it's important that you see a professional because for some businesses in the classic Shark Tank scenario, there are businesses that their burn rate is hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. And there are businesses out there, small businesses in our communities in Ontario, that if they're losing month over month, one or $2,000 a month, they know they will not be able to, with their skills and abilities, make that money back. So that's their sign to close up shop. There's a lot more financial indications like this one, but I wanted to give the big picture of there are financial and then there are personal reasons. On the personal front, it's something that you're not usually gonna see on the articles when you Google when to close my small business, how do I know if it's time to give up or quit on my small business, right? That's the negative spin that usually we see on closing your business, despite the fact that it can be a good thing for you and your future. On the personal front, one thing I feel it's my responsibility to shine light on, because again, you don't see it in the Google articles on closing a small business, is mental and physical health check-ins. There are individuals, because of the emotional implications that you're putting on yourself as regards your connection to your small business, that on the mental health front are going to be driven to the darkest depths possible, considering options of no return. And I think you know what I mean, although I wanna be very careful with the phrasing here. No business venture is worth that, especially in a country like Canada, where you're going to have avenues for support if you struggle to provide for yourself financially. There are governmental platforms that I'm not advising you sign up for first thing tomorrow, but there are ways to stay afloat for that period you might need to that don't need to push you to the brink of no return. There are business owners whose identity is 100% connected to their small business, sense of failure, lack of self-esteem, you know, that terrible self-image that then translates into if it becomes, if it's ignored long enough, you're gonna get into that realm of anger, you know, fueled by the depression, could enter that realm of violence, exhibiting violence towards family members, yellings and screamings and fights and even other kinds of violence, you know, that hopefully never happen in your personal life. But these are just basic steps of psychological developments once somebody hits certain levels of what they consider to be rock bottom. Have that mental check-in with yourself and you know, truly check in on what is going on. What do you feel when you think about showing up to opening the door of your small business tomorrow, whether it's a virtual or physical door? What do you feel about taking more calls for your small business tomorrow? How do you feel about the thought of closing your small business? What's the first thing that that makes you feel? Do you think of oh, freedom? Or does it make you feel other emotions? If it makes you feel other emotions, what is driving that? I know you need to provide for your family. I know you have dreams as a human being here on planet Earth. And I assure you there are hundreds, if not thousands of ways to hit both of those targets of providing for your family and of accomplishing your own dreams. Because life evolves your dreams evolve your capabilities in providing for your family evolve and for all that you're going through one strong positive thing you should always hold as regards your experience in the small business world is that you know what mistakes or what wrongs have taken place and that you now have the experience to never make those mistakes again and that is something that actually will help you and your family and whoever your loved ones are in the long term. So that's what I mean. Closing up shop, even on the emotional front, is something that should be looked to with the stronger chin, if you will. It's not the end of the world. The physical health, I touched on as well. I think that one's a little more self-explanatory, but not surprisingly, it's totally tied to the mental health as well. If you are noticing, you know, your body transform in a way that heart issues, brain issues, you know, kidney and liver issues, these things are popping up in addition to other physical ailments that one may experience, well, then it might be a time to have a good look in the mirror as well, because that goal you're trying to accomplish of giving yourself your best life or your family your best life, it's likely not going to be the best life if you're not around to experience it uh, for yourself, by yourself, if that's your scenario, or for your family, with your family, if that's your scenario. 
I want to end this video there. There are a million and one reasons to hold on to false hope when running your own small business and I'm aware of it. I only work with small business owners and entrepreneurs and I'm a small business owner myself. However, there is also a bigger picture to life and a, a, a world in which there is so much more that's meant for you outside of struggling every single day with a small business. And again, in those scenarios is included the fact that you can start the most successful small business in your city a year from now. Once you wrap this one up, take all the learnings, take on all the appropriate help the next time around, become more financially literate, address whatever issues took this ship down. There's other ships out there. And if there aren't, you build them. If you are in the considering closing up your business shop, I will link our website, graphingbusinesslaw.ca and email info graphingbusinesslaw.ca here and um, letting you know, reminding you again that you're in totally safe and capable hands if you are looking to close up shop and consider coming our way here at Graphing Business Law. If you are watching this video on YouTube again, I wanna thank you for watching, remind you to click like and subscribe, and of course, drop a comment down below. Our community here is really growing at Graphing Business Law. We're now at over 2,000 subscribers, and hopefully you feel putting out better content, stronger content, more valuable content than ever. So I'll end the video there, and thank you for watching.